You love collecting art supplies, don't you? In fact, I bet that you have art supplies in your cupboard that you've never even used before because you thought they were cool and then you got distracted with the next thing. Or maybe it's because you had no idea what to do with these new flashy supplies once you got them. Worry not, my fellow art supply junkies, I've got you covered. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you three quick project ideas that you can do when you've got new art supplies to test them out and get a feel for them. And they can all be completed in less than 30 minutes. When you're working with new materials, I recommend removing as many obstacles as possible so that you can really focus on the characteristics of the materials and you're not overwhelmed by other bigger concerns that have nothing to do with your new supplies. For this project, I have taped on a piece of four by six inch agave watercolor paper. This came in the January sketch box along with the Ink Tense paint pan set and the Ink Tense pencils. And I am going to start off with just a loose line sketch. This line is going to cross over itself. It might leave the paper and come back on. It will cut through multiple times. You're going to let go of your expectations. You're going to let go of a specific outcome and you're just going to let your pencil drag across the page. This neurographic art technique allows you to be present in the moment and allows you to let go of the expectations of the drawing. There's a reason that I'm not working representationally on this first project. Now I'm gonna come in and start working with these pencils and working on the line quality a bit more. So I'm coming into these intersections and I'm rounding out the corners. Focusing on rounding out the corners of your project allows you to be really present in the moment. This is a great project for learning about new materials, but it's also a great project for your brain and for your stress levels. Being here, being present, having something that kind of has some rules and some structure to it, but doesn't really require you to come up with anything can be a really relaxing process. This has been used with PTSD patients. And I have personally used this technique to reduce stress and anxiety. Phase one is complete when the line work is finished and those little intersections have been rounded out. Now I am going to move on to phase two. I'm going to fill in these spaces that have been created by the overlapping lines with the Inktense paint pan set and the Inktense pencils. And I've actually swatched these already. So I'm gonna bring my swatch sheet out. I'm gonna get painting. I'm really loving that moment where I get the ink tense pencil wet and it bleeds into the shape that I've just created. I think that's working really nicely. Although it is a little hard to control the edges with this larger brush. Not impossible, but a little trickier than it would be with a smaller brush. Okay, so this is an important lesson. I'm learning about how these products interact when they are used wet into wet. So when a, a wet color approaches another wet color, what's happening with that? So if I don't like that bleeding edge, I probably won't introduce a wet next to a wet shape again. But if I love it, I'm gonna try and experiment with more of that. I don't know if that's exactly what I want, but I might bring it back in one or two other places. You could do this art exercise with pencils, colored pencils, oil pastels, even with ink pens and do a different pattern inside each shape, kind of like a Zentangle thing. It's a super, super great activity to just try any new materials with. I really love these paint pans because I was able to do a lot with them. I was able to mix a ton of different colors even though I was only working with six pigments and it's so tiny. This could be a really portable activity. I'm using a hair dryer to fix this layer in place. Once it's dry, it's not going to be reactivated. Now it's time to play around with these Inktense pencils. So I'm gonna go over the top of some of these shapes that I've already painted in. I'm gonna layer with these. I'm gonna layer again with the, the paint pans and just explore my, my materials. At this point, there's really no rules. I can just continue laying in flat shapes. I can build up some textures and patterns. I can work on color mixing. It's just about exploring and experimenting with some new materials. Here I'm doing a wet onto wet technique. So I'm actually just painting right over the top of this color. And I'm noticing it's not reactivating. If I add some water right to the edge and it bleeds into the other one, then yes, I've got some crossover. But right now I'm just creating um, 
just just water right on the top and then I'm going to drop some paint right into it to explore how this paint performs with a wet on wet technique. Let's go ahead and drop some of that in. I'll play with a darker orange too just so that I've got some some contrast with the color I'm dropping in on the wet and wet. I really like what's happening. I am going to let this area air dry because if I bring the hair dryer into this area, it is going to start moving around all of the interesting things that are happening in this paint and I want them to stay put. So I'm just going to move over to another area and work somewhere else while I let this part dry. I've got several washes of color done with the Inktense paint pans and now I'm experimenting more intentionally with the Inktense colored pencils. Of course, I used water with these pencils in several parts of this drawing because that's really what's special about the Inktense pencils, that they're water soluble. But I also really liked the way that they performed on top of the paint pans dry. These red lines, I have no intention of adding any water to them, but they add a really nice character to the piece. Now for the most satisfying part of any drawing or painting, removing the tape. To do this flawlessly, pull the tape away from your piece at a 45 degree angle. All right, it's all done. So liked the combination of materials, liked the number of colors I could make with this. Still unsure about how to use them together and how to layer the colored pencils, but I'm gonna play around with those in another project. Are you getting curious about the supplies I've been using? I got all of these supplies in the January 2023 sketch box and I absolutely love them, but I might be a little biased because I was the featured artist for this box. If you want to get this box or if you want to sign up for a subscription where you can get surprise art materials mailed to your door each month, head over to GetSketchbox.com and use the code Lana Glowshot to save 10% off any subscription on their website. I mentioned removing as many barriers as possible and sometimes I feel like color can be a barrier because you have so many options to choose from. What if we limited the color palette? In the pencil set, there is a red, yellow, blue. These are your primary colors. Can you make a piece of art with just these three? I'm starting with a loose sketch and I haven't done a lot of thumbnailing or compositional work on this yet, so I'm just gonna rough it in really quick. Um, I'm drawing a pair, if you can't tell yet. <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and put a reference image right up there. And you'll notice this pair is predominantly green. Uh, which will be an interesting challenge because all I am working with is a red, a yellow, and a blue. I switch over to the blue pencil to refine my sketch and begin establishing the shadow shapes. This second pass is much more accurate. When you look at a piece like this and you're looking at the image, the, the reference image, you're probably just looking at the pair, but all of the highlights and the light shape of the pair are going to show up in contrast to the background. And so I'm actually going to knock the background in first. So now I'm moving over into the pair and I just have those three color options. So when I need to go darker, I'm using a combination of red and blue and more pressure. When I need to go lighter, I'm usually using a little bit more yellow and I'm using less pressure from all of my pencils. But just because the majority of this pair is green doesn't mean it's it's just going to be yellow and blue. Notice that I'm using tons of red. That red is helping me neutralize the green and creating a variety of different shades. This primary color art project would work with just about any medium out there. I've done it with colored pencils and these ink tense colored pencils. It would be really fun with pastels, with watercolor, with oil pastels, with artist crayons, you name it. All right, base layer is done and I am going to start adding water. I had kind of disregarded this brush earlier, but I think this is gonna be really, really good for blending the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. I don't love this brush for details, but it works really well for big flat washes of color. Its stiff texture was able to disrupt the color pencil a lot more than that other brush that I've been using that's better for detail work. Okay, so now for the moment of truth, let's see if I can get green from this yellow and blue that I used. I'm using this smaller brush because I definitely want more control in this area. And when I switch over to the shadow areas, I'm going to clean my brush off just so that I'm not like dragging air, dragging color that doesn't belong. 
All right, so same thing when I move out of that shadow area. And I'm looking really closely at my reference photo when I'm doing this. It's not simply just like add water and leave it. Um, I, I really am trying to control the way that I get green from this combination. And, and a lot of that's gonna come from observation. Oh, it's very yellow there. I'm gonna need to get some, some blue into that area. So I'm actually like pulling from the shadows here and I'm gonna drag a little bit into that area. While the pigment on the paper is wet, it can be manipulated a lot. And it's important to note that these colors might dry quite differently than they appear wet. Being curious and playful with your materials will allow you to discover the unique characteristics of these and to help you start anticipating what they'll do under different circumstances. Here I'm adding a second layer of pencil and water to that pencil. Inktense pencils are unique from watercolor because they actually build transparent layers of color without activating the previous colors underneath. Once a layer of color has been wet and dried, it is permanent. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and call this one done. Pretty excited with what I could do with just these three. Is it perfect? No, but I was able to play around with color, mix up some different colors, start modeling some form. And what I liked about the pencils on this piece is that I was able to use them as a paint and adding the water helped me mix the colors better, but I was also able to use them dry to refine some shapes because I did lose some of that form with the, the application of water and bringing the pencil back Back in helped me to reestablish that a little bit more and get some of the control back. So it was a really fun aspect of these pencils. Ta-da! I'm about to show you a bonus project. It's a twist on project number two. But before I do that, would you hit the like button? It's a great way to support the channel and all it takes is one teeny tiny little click. Thanks so much. There is actually a limited palette exercise that's even more limited in case you're trying out supplies and you only wanna grab like one supply and that would be a value study. So for this next one, I'm going to do a value study in just like one main color and I'm actually going to mix the Payne's Gray and the Red Oxide because that's gonna give me a really neutral grayed out brown color and then for this particular piece, I can kind of push some areas to be a little warmer and some to be a little colder. But that's just that's just my preference and what I'm excited about doing. You could do an entire value study in just one of these colors and it would also work for the pencils. So I'm getting started by mixing up the paint so that they're ready and available. And I'm just using the top of a little food container. You can use any kind of plastic material for your palette. My first layer was too dark, so I pulled a little bit of that off, added more water, and then I followed the very basic watercolor rules that I've established for myself, working from light to dark and general to specific. Now, I really enjoy looking at watercolor and watching very talented artists work with watercolor, but I don't feel like I am particularly proficient with this particular media. So there were definitely some challenges that I experienced in this piece. And one of those bigger challenges was working with edges. I feel like I'm still not quite able to control the kind of edge that I want with my, with my wet media. When you're working with any new material, it's important to understand what are the limitations of that material and what are the limitations that you experience as an artist. So for me in particular, I've worked with lots of wet media before, but I know that this isn't a media that I have a ton of proficiency in. So some of the edge issues were likely a me issue rather than a material issue. And when you're working with your new materials, really be thoughtful about what limitations you're experiencing and evaluating them appropriately. This little value study is all done. It was so much fun. I used the red oxide in the Payne's gray and I was able to play around with warm and cool a bit and get to know this ink tense paint pan set just a little bit better. So now I'm actually going to draw this portrait all over again. I've got it sketched out, same size, same composition, same proportions. And this is 
key because all of this information is fresh in my mind. I just painted it. So now I can look at the full color range. I can play around with more colors. I can experiment more with these colored pencils because I have already worked out the values. When you play around with new materials, a great strategy can be to play with these materials with a drawing that you are familiar with, with a composition that you've already done before. So you can redo a painting, and this is actually a painting I've done before, a color pencil painting that I've done on an eight by 10 inch sheet that I spent tens of hours on. You can remake a drawing, you can draw your dog again. If you've drawn your dog several different ways, draw your dog again. Work with something familiar, that's gonna give you more flexibility and more opportunity to really get to know the materials because you're not gonna be juggling too many new things at the same time. All right, let's get going. It was so much fun having the full spectrum of color after doing that value study. I felt like I was coming in way more prepared. And I also took what I learned about the edges in that piece. I played around a lot more with soft edges and using wet on wet techniques. And I actually wish I had done more of this. I really like what's happening with that red hair as it bleeds into the chest in the background. Once I had a layer of those ink tense pans laid in, I came in with the pencils. And these pencils really allowed me to refine the detail in the features of the face. From this point forward, it was all about layering. I used the ink tense pencils to refine, I added water to blend, and then I would additionally bring in the ink tense paint pans if I needed a specific color or if I wanted to mix up a wash of color. So I've jumped forward way further into the process because I'm consolidating probably a three hour drawing down into a minute or two. But you can see here the way that I use the ink tense pencils and the paint pans for some of those final details. Okay, I think it's done. the full spectrum of color. We'll value study next to it. Do you have some new art supplies you're excited to try out? Let me know what they are and which project you're gonna try first down in the comments below. And if you try any of these projects, be sure to share them with me. I'd love to see them. You can tag me at Lana Glowshot Art or DM me over on Instagram. Now it's time to learn more about Inktense colored pencils. You can do that in this video right here. And if you want this particular box of supplies or you want surprise art supplies mailed to your door each month, head over to GetSketchbox.com and be sure to use the code Lana Glowshot to get 10% off any subscription. Thank you so much for watching. Stay curious and creative and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.